Hey everyone, let's take a look at our next multiple choice question. So it says, in a bag, a child has 325 coins worth $19.50. So just offhand, I think that's a lot of coins to only have about 20 bucks, but okay. There were three types of coins, so pennies, nickels, and dimes. Uh, that's part of why this is only $19.50. Um, if the bag contained the same number of nickels as dimes, how many pennies were in the bag? Okay. So if I look, I have three variables and I'm going to scroll up just a bit so I have some room. So I'm going to use X, Y, and Z here for my three variables. So I'll call X. That's going to be the number of pennies that I have in the bag. And then Y is going to be, I'll just use quote marks. It's the number of, and what's our next one? Nickels in the bag. And Z is going to be the number of, what do we got? Some dimes in the bag. Okay, so I've got three variables, which means there must have been three equations somehow written into this problem. And let's go with the numbers, right? So there's going to be something with 325, there's going to be something with 1950, and there's going to be something with the fact that there's the same number of nickels as dimes. So let's just start with the 325 coins. If I had 325 coins, then I know x plus y plus z has to equal 325 because these are the numbers of each of my coins, right? So between my pennies, nickels, and dimes, I had 325 coins. The next one gives you a monetary num um, value, right? $19.50. So let's start converting our nickels, pennies, and dimes into some money. So for however many nickel, excuse me, for however many pennies I had, they're worth one cent. So I'll take X and I'll multiply it by 0.01 to get its value. All right, and for however many nickels I had, I'm gonna multiply that by 0.05 because that's its worth, monetary worth, and then the dimes are 10 or 0.10 times Z, and we know that's got a total 1950. Now, just offhand, I can already tell you, because I have some decimals in here, I'm ultimately gonna multiply this by 100 just to get rid of the decimals not too long from now. I just prefer when I'm doing systems of equations to not have decimals or fractions, but it's totally your call. All right, the next thing it says is we have the same numbers of nickels as dimes. So I know that Y is equal to Z, right? We know that the same number of nickels as dimes. Okay, so let me go ahead and multiply this one by 100. And then we're going to look at our system of equations. So if I multiply every term in here by 100, I will actually get X plus 5Y plus 10Z equaling 1950. All right, and I'll, I'll put here, oops, that I multiplied by 100. All right, and that's just to get rid of decimals. It's a personal preference. All right, you don't have to do this at all. I just personally like to do it. So I've got my system of equations here. And how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna work this is I'm gonna get rid of the Z variable pretty early on. And this is, this is how I'm gonna do it. And let me color code this again. If Y is equal to Z, I'm gonna put a Y right here in this equation, and I'm gonna put a Y in this equation. So I'm gonna use that as my first substitution. So I'll have X plus Y plus Y equaling 325, and then I will have x plus 5y plus 10y equaling 1950. And when I simplify that a little bit, I'm going to have x plus 2y equaling 325, and then I will have x plus 15y equaling 1950. All right, and so for me at this point, I think it's easier to eliminate the x variables, right, because they both have the same coefficient, of one, so all I need to do is multiply one of these equations by negative one and add it to the other. So I'm gonna multiply the top equation by negative one, and let's see what we get here. This would give me negative x minus two y is equal to negative 325. This would give me negative x, oops, not excuse me, I'm not multiplying that by anything. This would, I would just leave as x plus 15 y equaling 1950, so let's go ahead add these two equations together and see what we get. These are gonna cancel by design. Um, negative two y and 15 y, we've got 13 y here. And when I subtract 325 from 1950, that's gonna give me 1625. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides by 13, all right? And that's gonna tell me y is, and when I crunch this, I had 125 nickels. By that same rationale, since I have the same number of nickels as dimes, I can just see right off the bat I have 125 dimes as well. 
All right, now let's see what they were asking for. It actually said how many pennies were in the bag. So ultimately I want the value of X here. So let's go plug back in our, our Y value of 125 and our Z value of 125 into either of these two initial equations. I'm personally just gonna pick this one because it, it looks simplest to me, at least in my brain. So I've got X plus Y plus Z has to equal 325. So that would be X plus 125 plus 125 equals 325. And when I solve for X here, that's gonna give me 75 pennies. And what you could do at this point is you could actually just double check or triple check if you will. Actually, let me get a different color. You can take your X value of 75 and your Y of 125 and Z of 125 and see if it fits in this equation, right? Is it true that 125 plus 125 plus 75 is 325? That is true. The next thing I would check is that this money is working out. So let me go ahead and head to my calculator for just a moment and let, let's take a look at this. So I would do point, I do one cent or 0.01 times those 75 pennies, right? And then I would do 0.05 times those 125 nickels. And then I would add to it 10 cents on those 125 dimes. And this should be 1950 and it is. So you can always double check if you have a little bit of time that your system is consistent and working. So I'm gonna go with option A for this one and I've solved my three by three.